Hi guys, my name is Thais and I'm a second year astronomy bachelor student at the University of Groningen. I'm making this video to clear up any doubts for incoming students and to talk about things I wish I had known before I started my studies. I'll go over things like the campus, the housing situation, the schedule, the quality of education and the difficulty of the study, the social life, the honors college, the study abroad, and finally, some things I didn't like. I've been living in the Netherlands since I was 13, but I'm actually from Spain and Brazil. I still consider myself an international student, although I have been living here quite a while. Whenever I'm not studying, I'm either cooking, painting, or ice skating. And besides astronomy, I am very passionate about education and outreach. Both astronomy and physics are in the Zernike campus, which is so great because Zernike is such a beautiful and modern campus. It was made for science and technology studies, and actually a lot of the buildings are named after Nobel Prize winning scientists. In the first semester, you're likely to have all of your lectures in the Aleta Jacobs Hall. This is also the same building where you have all of your exams for the rest of your degree. After that, you'll mainly be in Bernoulliborg and Feringa buildings. Bernoulliborg, also known as BB, is the blue building made of glass. And if you step far away enough, you'll see that there's a metal dome on top of this building. And this is the telescope that astronomy students get to use in their first year. This building also has the study landscape, which is the most popular study area in campus. It tends to be very full. Then you also have the Feringa building, which is brand new and was actually built to replace another building called the Nienborg, which was the old physics and chemistry building. And the reason why it's old is because not only were the ceilings and the windows collapsing, but the whole building is full of asbestos and there have been several leaks, power shortages and chemical spills in this building. So MB is a bit of a running joke among students and it's never surprising news to hear that Nyborg got some new problem and they have to evacuate the building. There's another building I want to talk about, which is not a building that astronomy and physics students will go to very often because it's the biology building. It's called Linausborg and this building is so beautiful on the inside. You have couches, hanging lights, glass panes facing the river underneath the building. This is my favorite place to study, even more than the study landscape. I highly suggest finding housing close to campus, especially because in the winter you have a lot of wind, rain and snow, and biking through these for long distances if you live far from campus can be really annoying. In general, it's just a lot nicer to live close by, but of course, with the housing situation, you really can't be picky. The degree is three years, and each year you have two semesters, and each semester has two blocks. So 1A and 1B in the first semester, and 2A and 2B in the second semester. Each block, you follow three courses at the same time, and that is the case for year one and two. But the third year is quite different because you have a minor in the first semester, and I'll talk about that later. But then you also have a bachelor thesis in the last block of the last year, and this is where you do a research project with the help of a supervisor to conclude your degree. And in this gap between your minor and your thesis, you'll also do courses. So three courses at the same time. And this is basically the structure of the degree. In my experience, I felt that the quality of education would kind of fluctuate throughout the degree. So in the first year, most courses were all very structured, organized, and had amazing professors. But then in the second year, the first semester was a bit of a mess, and professors were not that good, 
and the organization of courses was just all over the place and a bit confusing. But then in the second semester, the quality suddenly skyrocketed and courses became some of my favorite I've had so far with amazing teaching materials and great professors. So overall, I would say that the education quality is quite good, but it does go up and down. And besides courses, the university also has a lot of opportunities for personal development. Like you can join so many committees, student teams, and so many different sports. It does sometimes feel like you have so many options and it's a bit overwhelming, but you definitely get a feeling that the doors are all open for you and you just have to decide which ones you want to go through. Astronomy and physics are very hard degrees, and you do need to be prepared to spend a lot of time studying. The content is also really compressed, as if three years was not enough time to teach, so they had to cram everything. And the first year is especially busy. For example, this is what my schedule looked like in the first year. I think the reason why they make the first year very busy is because of the BSA requirement. I've heard that it's about filtering out the students who can make it. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that, but after that, it does get a lot better. For example, this is my schedule now in second year. In university, you're fully responsible for your own learning. And this means that nobody is there to force you to study, but also nobody is there to make sure that you keep up with the work. So it's very easy to fall behind. It's also very normal to not attend every single lecture and every single tutorial, even though most of the times these are really helpful and going to them can actually save you more time than studying at home. But it's also the case that some courses just don't have very useful lectures. And honestly, I have skipped many lectures in a course before and still passed with a good grade. So there's really no pressure to attend everything perfectly all the time. And you can easily take a week off in the middle of the school year if you need to. It's quite normal. Also, astronomy and physics degrees tend to be full of students who were top of their class in high school. Actually, in the first day, they told us these degrees had the highest secondary school grades compared to any other degree in the university. So that means you're likely going to be surrounded by overachievers who are always aiming for 9s and 10s in every course. But please do not compare yourself to others. I promise you, a passing grade already shows you have a good understanding of the content and that is what really matters. If you always compare yourself, then you're never going to be happy with your grade because somebody will always be doing better than you. My advice is to only compare yourself to your past self and I know that it's cliche, but it's true. The city is alive at night with several bars, clubs, restaurants, and events hosted by study associations, there's always something to do. And during the day, you have every store you could possibly need, and even a cat cafe. There's also the Norderplatzen, which is Groningen's biggest park and is perfect for a picnic with your friends. About halfway through my first year, I applied for the honors program. And the application process is very selective because there's only a few spots per faculty. There are several application rounds and you need to upload a motivation letter, recommendation letter, and a video. Then as the last application round, there's a lottery. So even if you make it to the last round, there's still a random chance of being accepted. There's also a big misconception I want to clear up, which is that honors is not about being a top student. The point of the honors program is to provide knowledge and skills that you don't get from your degree alone. So for example, I am very passionate about astronomy, but I also have other interests like psychology, philosophy, and business. So the honors college allows me to go into these other interests besides from my degree. And when they select students, they don't just choose whoever has the highest grade. 
They look for students who are passionate about other things outside their studies, because that is what the Honors College is about. If you are looking for an addition to your degree that shows you are a top student, you could go for a cum laude achievement. I only have one complaint about the Honors College, and that is how strict they are with attendance. All honors classes and events are mandatory, and there's really no excuse that they will accept no matter how personal or important it is. And I have heard that there's even been cases where a student was sick and the honors college said they had to attend or they would have to retake the course next year. I also once had a very important personal event and the honors college just did not allow me to miss one class, so they made me give up the class I was taking and switch to a different one just so that I would not miss any classes. In my third year, I'll be going on a study abroad in Hong Kong. I'll be making another video about that when the time comes, but for now, this is what you need to know. The study abroad is in the first semester of the third year. You can also do it in the second semester, but it's a lot less common. The study abroad is for your minor, which is a space in your degree that you can dedicate to pursuing any courses that interest you from any subject. You can choose from a very big list of countries and different universities, and you need to apply with a motivation letter and your top three choices. Within the EU, there are hundreds of universities that you could go to. Just look out for the language requirement because many countries like Spain and Italy do not have courses in English. There are many options for funding your exchange. For example, for students that go outside of the EU, they get a guaranteed scholarship that covers most of your costs. And you also don't pay extra tuition fees because of the agreement between the two universities. There's a few things in this study that I hope will improve in the future. But seeing how much dedication the students and staff put into improving the program and implementing our feedback, I have no doubt that this degree will just keep getting better and better. Firstly, I started to notice that astronomy and physics got way less holidays than other studies. I would have friends going on trips while I was stuck studying at home, and I would start to feel burnt out because there was not enough of a break after exams, and we would just go right back into new classes while other studies got more time to rest. I think the reason for this is because there's a lot of content to learn in just three years, while in other countries, it's usually done in four. So in a way, you're kind of trading one year of study for less holidays. Another thing is that the cum laude requirements are a lot harder here. I won't go into the details because you can find it online, but basically in other universities, it's a lot easier to get a cum laude and you're allowed to resit as much as you want, while here you're not allowed any resits and the requirements are a lot harder. Lastly, it is important to be aware that the Netherlands has announced huge budget cuts to research and higher education. And this affects, for example, the number of TAs for a course you'll have, or you might get less tutorials because there's just not enough budget. I really hope this video has helped you. If you have any questions about the astronomy degree, if you are undecided between physics and astronomy, if you are wondering about the honors program, or if you have any questions about the exchange, I'd be very happy to help. You can reach out to me or you can comment under this video and I'd be happy to answer your questions. Um, I'm also planning to make another video about my exchange in Hong Kong. So if you wanna hear about that, stick around and I'll see you very soon.